Hoi everyone, Kevin Boothby here. Happy New Year to you all. I um, want to do a video for you guys on how I go about generating electrical power on this relatively small 31 foot cruising boat. Um, and as those of you following my videos know, I do not have an inboard engine in this boat. Uh, so I don't have the alternator on the diesel to charge my batteries with. Uh, nor do I have a generator in this boat. Um, so you might be wondering, um, how do I generate electrical power? And at this point, by one and only one means, uh, which is solar panels. Um, and I'm pretty well sold on solar panels. And uh, as we'll discuss later, uh, rigid solar panels, um, though they're kind of bulky, um, are, are, are quite cheap these days and I have found a, to be a reliable source of, of electrical power. Now when I first started off, um, I didn't have a 12 volt system at all. Um, um, I used uh, kerosene lights for both my nav lights and my cabin lights. Um, and the only electronics I had was a handheld VHF, which I powered with dry cell batteries, uh, the single sideband AM FM radio also powered with batteries, flashlights, um, and I think that was about it. Um, so th this boat was uh, uh, th this boat was pretty much dead simple starting off, uh, but over time um, I, I wanted to have things like a permanently installed VHF radio, uh, which also has an AIS receiver. I wanted to have the LED navigation lights, um, as I discussed in another video. Uh, while the kerosene lights work and are reliable, uh, they're a pain and uh, they don't put out nearly as good a light as the LED lights. Um, and then also I, I wanted some creature comfort things, um, such as refrigeration, which I installed uh, a little over four years ago, and I don't regret that. Um, um, it really does make your life more pleasant, and uh, especially for a, a liveaboard cruising sailor like myself. So when I first started adding um, a 12 volt system, a 12 volt battery and solar panels to charge it. Uh, I started off with, uh, if I recall, these Sunsea panels, uh, which were not very well constructed at all and uh, didn't last more than about a year in the marine environment. Um, and then I went to these semi-flexible Gantz panels, uh, which were quite expensive but were advertised as and appeared to be very rugged are ruggedly constructed, uh, so appeared to be a good investment. You can see how thin they are, and they are semi-flexible. They'll bend a bit, um, and so they're they're easy they're easy to stow. And uh, as of this day, I still don't have any of my panels permanently mounted. I simply have them on the boom and, and laid out on deck while while I'm at anchor. Um, so I, I wanted, I liked the idea of having panels that I could easily stow. I could take off the deck and stow below when I go sailing. Uh, however, this is a 40 watt panel. Um, I also had two 30 watt panels and one of the 30 watt panels after about a year and a half its power output had dropped by uh, more than 30 percent. So the company replaced it under warranty and then the replacement panel uh, is pretty much the same thing. After about a year and a half um, the power output was dropping noticeably. Um, so, uh, so after that, I went to rigid. I went to rigid panels, uh, which are heavier, bulkier. Uh, but I've, so far, I've not had any problem with rigid panels. And also, by the way, rigid panels are far less expensive than um, than these semi-flexible panels. I, I just did a price check on this. Uh, a 30 watt Gantz panel from Defender goes for about three hundred and sixty dollars. Um, a 100 watt rigid monocrystalline panel from Renogy um, goes for about $130. So three times the amount of power for one third the price. And as I've said, I've found um, the rigid panels to be much more reliable. So the solar array for this boat consists of two 50 watt panels. Uh, which I usually lay out on the foredeck as seen here and uh, just be careful not to step on them and um, I run the wire just right right down through the forward hatch there um, and then it goes underneath the floorboards uh, back to the charge controller by the batteries um, then I have a 60 watt and a 100 watt panel um, which I lay out on the boom 
obviously while I'm at port, while I'm at anchor. Um, and then finally, all the way aft, there's a 12 watt panel. Um, so that gives me a total, uh, total array of 272 watts, uh, which on sunny days, I estimate gives me about 40 to 50 amp hours of charge per day. All right, so let's just get right onto the hood here. Welcome to the junkyard. Uh, right in front of you here is my main storage facility, which are two 125 amp hour uh, AGM batteries. And these are made by VMAX, and uh, they're specifically designed for solar charging. And I've had these batteries for about four years now, and so far I've not noticed any drop in capacity. Uh, previously, I had lead acid batteries and uh, found even after, with those, even after a year, I could begin to notice a drop in the capacity. Um, so, AGM batteries are more expensive, but in my experience, um, they're, uh, they're, they're better batteries. Now, off to the left here, these are two charge controllers, and the top one here is the controller to the panels on the boom, and the bottom one is to the panels on the floor deck. And uh, as you can see, their lights are blinking, uh, which means that they're beginning to cut the current from the panels. Um, when the lights are solid, that means that it is bulk charging. So the charge controller is just allowing the current to flow directly from the panel onto the battery. Uh, however, uh, we've reached the point, it's about 2 in the afternoon now, um, where uh, the charge controller has to start cutting the current, otherwise the panels might overcharge and damage the batteries. And if we just check the voltage here, got my inverter on, our voltage of the bank is about 14.1, 14.2 volts. Um, and generally, uh, the charge controller will not let that voltage get above about 14, right, right about, above about where it's at right now. Um, and this off to the right here is, uh, um, this is my refrigeration unit. So here's the compressor. And you can see the red light is on, which means it's in freeze mode. So presently this thing is drawing 6 amps, and it's freezing the fluid uh, into the holding plate in the, in the isotherm. Um, and, uh, well, that, that's a discussion for another video. But anyway, that's my refrigeration unit there. Um, and as you can see... Uh, as I said before, a lot of this stuff came organically. That's why it's, uh, well, it kind of looks like a mess, but uh, it works. So, One point here I want to make is that, uh, as you can see, my for forward panels, uh, I simply run the wire down through the forward hatch. And I used to have my charge controller right here to the forward panels in front of the mast. Um, and then I ran, uh, I think I was using uh, 14 gauge or even uh, 12 gauge wire from the charge controller uh, back to the batteries. Um, and uh, that's a run of about 15 feet. And I found that didn't work uh, because, uh, because of the voltage drop of um, pushing 3 or 4 amps of current through even, say, 12 gauge wire over a distance of 15 feet. I was finding a voltage drop of about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts. And the net result of that is that the charge controller was not charging the battery because it would be seeing 14 volts at the mast uh, when in fact the, the voltage at the battery was only about 13.3, 13.4. So it would begin cutting the current off too soon um, and thus the batteries weren't getting charged. So one thing I've found is that uh, you don't want to have your charge controllers more than, I would say, about a meter from your batteries. Um, and I just thought I'd mention that because I, I haven't seen that anywhere in the literature. Um, and uh, so, But it's just something I found uh, as I learned about this. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, uh, you know, I like the idea of solar. That sounds great. Um, it's environmentally friendly. Uh, solar panels are quiet, relatively maintenance-free, they don't drip oil on anything. Uh, but uh, w what about when the sun doesn't shine? Um, what about cloudy days? So my experience on that has been as follows. Um, if you have cloudy days where the cloud cover is thick enough for uh, rain, 
um, then your solar array will be down to about 10% of what it normally puts out. Uh, so my array on a sunny day, I'm generally getting somewhere around 10 amps. Um, on, a, on a similarly on a rainy day, I'm down to about an amp, so basically hardly anything. Um, so what I've found is, what that means is that you need enough battery capacity so that you can you can live for two to three days um, without any without any significant sunshine. Uh, you got to be able to survive for at, at least two or three days and, and still have your battery bank above 50% charge. So you need a fair bit of battery capacity. Um, and, and of course, uh, if, if you have a, a stretch of rainy weather in the forecast, you, you want to start conserving power. Um, and uh, for example, I, I would... Uh, um, sometimes I'd, I'd, I'd take my, my laptop computer into a Starbucks or something and just plug it into the wall power, you know, order a cup of coffee, plug it into the wall power, use the Wi-Fi, and that way I would get my, com my laptop computer charged back up rather than, um, um, rather than using ship's power for that. Uh, so, you know, you, you get creative, you can make it work. Um, the other thing I've found is on passages, uh, like for example, this passage south in November, um, you have this situation where the sun is very far south and you're heading south and the sun is fairly low in the sky. Uh, so the problem there is, is the sails are often shading the panels. Um, and so, uh, so again, I've had to, uh, I often have to frequently move the panels around to catch some sunshine. And, um, and I have had the battery bank on passages go down to around 50%. Um, but as I've said, uh, these AGM batteries seem to be really tough in that regard. Um, uh, lead acid batteries that just that just seemed to kill them, but uh, the AGM seemed like they, they can they, they can take that kind of punishment and you can charge them back up and uh, they'll be fine. So of course there's there's some simple uh, backup solutions to uh, solar panels. Uh, one is to to get a portable gasoline generator, um, and nowadays those are fairly compact. They're not too expensive. And, um, and they don't make too much noise. Um, so that's, that's, always, uh, that's always a solution for a backup. And lastly, uh, what I love about solar power, um, and I think most cruising sailors would agree on this, is that once you get everything all set up, it's free. Um, there, there's, uh, there's no utility bill at the end of the month. You just sit here in the tropical sun, and uh, the energy flows in and it, it keeps my keeps the refrigeration the refrigerator cool keeps my radios working uh, it allows me to uh, charge double a AA and triple a batteries for uh, flashlights and so on it charges up my phone it charges the battery in this camera uh, it powers my laptop computer and perhaps most importantly of all it powers the amp to my electric guitar So I, I hope you found this, uh, this video useful. Um, as I've said, I've, I'm pretty much sold on solar power. It's, it works quite well for me. Um, and I, I hope this video will give you some ideas about how you can go about generating electrical power on your boat, especially if you plan to go long distance cruising, where you're going to spend a lot of time at anchor, um, away from marinas and away from uh, shore power outlets. Mm -hmm.